Today, I want to talk to you about seven best psychology hacks I've used in our own businesses for sales and marketing to increase our revenue significantly, completely ethically, and in a way that makes the process enjoyable for both the prospective customers, your own staff, and also it increases the word of mouth and your overall revenue in the business. So I'm going to explain to you what these seven psychology hacks are. And I have to say, you know, the very given point before we even start going into this is note the fact that I said you got to do this ethically. So everything you do that I'm going to share with you, they're pretty powerful methods and they're going to have an impact, but they have to be truthful. This becomes clear once, once I explain what they are, because if you're not truthful, you're going to have negative word of mouth and it's going to backfire. So be very careful with that. Only use the, the ones that I'm going to teach you that you're ready for actually using truthfully. The second point I have to make is that this assumes that you have a product or service that's absolutely absolutely fantastic people love so if you're just starting out you may want to not use any of these tactics right away but if you're established you have some word of mouth going you're you're generating six seven and uh, maybe eight figures and you have not used some of these or not all of them definitely give these a try they're gonna uh, absolutely possibly if you're not using any of them they could completely transform your business Let's go over these. I wanna, what I wanna do is I wanna uh, tell you what these are and then go through them one by one so that I can explain how you could use each of them in your business with maybe some examples. So here are the seven best psychology hacks that you could use in your sales and marketing to absolutely transform your business. First one is deadlines. Second one is scarcity. Third one is reciprocity. Fourth one is completion bias. Fifth one is risk removal. And sixth one is social proof. And last one is building a relationship. And that last one is really important. I'm going to explain to you how that's a hack in psychology in a minute. And it's one of the ones that most people forget about, or it's one of the ones that people start realizing pretty late into their business, which is actually one of the most important ones. Just because that's number seven doesn't mean it's the least important. It's actually one of the most important. But let's start from the top. So the first one I talked about was deadlines. People are mostly motivated when they have a deadline. There's a couple of ways you could use it in your business. For example, you could have an offer that's expiring on a specific date. And once it offers, that offer is no longer available until you essentially have that offer and in, in the future, sometime in the future. So that's the key. Again, with all of these things, it has to be real. So when it expires, it expires. So that's one. So it's essentially something's available for a limited time, once the timer reaches zero, it is no longer available. That's it. You have to join the wait list. It's done. Second type for this deadline driven type of a psychology hack you could use in your sales and marketing is to have a either a price increase or decrease. Now, I normally don't like discounts in essentially any type of business. I don't like doing discounts. Discounts are going to train your customers that you're essentially something like Walmart. Again, if you're Walmart, good for you. That makes sense. For most businesses that are watching this, this is not a good idea because if you condition the customer on discounts, they're not never going to buy anything from you unless you have a discount. And this is actually going to work in a negative feedback loop, which you don't want in business. You also want positive feedback loops. So what's the alternative to a discount? A price increase promo. It does absolutely fantastic. So you tell your customers, hey, on X date, the price is going to go up by Y. By October 15th, the price will go up by $500. And it does absolutely wonders. And it doesn't do the same thing that a price decrease does. Second type of a psychology hack that you must absolutely use in your sales and marketing, if you can ethically, is scarcity. Having a limited number of anything, whether it's a product or a service, absolutely changes its perception. When there's a limited quantity of anything, its value goes up. You've probably heard, you know, supply and demand. 
This is one of the oldest discoveries in the markets and in business. And it always works and it works really well as long as it is actually limited. And as long as once the limit is reached, it is no longer available. So for example, let's say you're, you're offering a service and you say, I can do three consultations this month. And once the three are done, it's done. I can no longer take anyone for another month, for another two months, for another six months. That's a type of scarcity you could use. The third type of a psychology hack you should use in your sales and marketing is reciprocity. People are more likely to act favorably towards someone who has already acted towards them favorably. So for example, in your social life, if you're giving somebody a compliment and then later on you ask them for something, more likely they're going to respond. If you actually go do something for somebody, let's say, for example, somebody complains that, you know, their car is broke, you get go out of your way, you go help them out, maybe help them tow the car, give them a boost, whatever, more likely they're going to do something for you in return later on. This is really important. Reciprocity works in a way that's memory dependent. So if you want to ask for something, it has to be as soon to the, to the time you have done something, or you will have to remind the person that you've done something before you ask, because it's totally memory dependent. So if you go back, let's say you help somebody with their car broke and you, next year you ask them for something, they're not even going to remember. They won't do anything for you just because you did that. They may not even remember it. In your sales and marketing, you want to provide something of value upfront. So let's say, for example, you've given them an ebook. You've given them a full, you know, three hours course. Uh, you've given them a, maybe a physical hard copy book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now is the time for you to ask something in return. And this something in return could be something as simple as their email address. So you could get in touch or you could ask them to book a call with you for, to talk to you as, you know, for example, a free initial consultation or anything else you could think of, this could actually apply and it works really well. The next type of a psychology hack that you should use in your business is the completion bias. People are more likely to complete a task that they have started and have progressed to a certain degree than something that they have never done or it's very hard for them to get to completion or they don't see the completion. So let me give you an example. If, for example, in your sales and marketing, let's say your marketing, you have a form that people are filling out to book a phone conversation with you. If you break that process into multiple steps, where, for example, the first process is, step is very simple, very friction-free. It just says your email, not even their name, email address. To complete your booking process, provide your email address. They provide the email address, then in step two, you say step two of two, and then you ask certain other questions. More likely they will do all of that than if you ask everything all up front with like seven different things. This is really important because you could use this, for example, in marketing, you could, you could use this in your sales in very different ways where the completion bias could work in your favor if you break things down into little small step and make sure your very first step is very risk-free for the prospect and it's very easy to complete. The fifth type of a psychology hack you must absolutely use in your sales and marketing is risk removal. People are risk averse. So if you could mitigate that risk for people, the chance of them actually wanting to do business with you, buy stuff from you, talk to you on the phone will become that much more likely. In the case of, let's say somebody again, booking a call with you and you say, hey, this call is absolutely, just one sentence, this call is absolutely free. There is zero obligation to buy anything at all. That removes the risk. The risk is, oh my God, what if I go and it's just a sales pitch, right? Here's another way. Now you're on the call. You want to close that prospect you have on the call. How do you remove risk from them when they're about to give you their credit card? You, you could do it in multiple ways. For example, you say it's a completely secure checkout. Or even better, you, you provide a guarantee that guarantees that you will do what you promised or their full money back. Even better if you do this type of a guarantee. If your business allows, you're confident, of course, you provide such a guarantee. Hey, you will not have to pay unless you get results. That always works absolutely fantastic. If you could offer something like that, I can guarantee you 
I'm, I'm also going to guarantee you something here. If you could actually deliver what you promised, I can guarantee you that if you could create an offer where the person does not have to pay until they see the results you promised, it will significantly increase your conversion rates because you've completely removed the risk from it. The sixth type of a psychology hack you have to use in your sales and marketing is the use of social proof. Now, social proof can be in the form of, let's say, a marketing landing page is having lots of video testimonials, lots of verified third-party reviews. The key is third-party verified because people now are just, they're not very into reading reviews that the website owners make themselves because they don't trust people anymore. Makes perfect sense. So make sure it's established by a third party and the consumers are writing it on somebody else's review site. And then you're able to display that on your website. So those work really well as, as a form of a social proof. The other type of social proof you could have as an example is if you could show significant social media engagement and followers. Engagement is more important than the number of followers because that means it's real people. But again, people are really worried that businesses fake things and because some businesses are pretty scammy and they do and they will buy followers, etc. But you can't fake engagement. So it has to be actual engagement. That works really well. And in the form of, let's say, a service, and now let's say in a sales call, what kind of a social proof you could provide is if you could provide that your experts are really well-known experts in the field that your prospect recognizes. That always works really well as a social proof. Here's now the seventh type of a psychology hack that you absolutely have to use in your sales and marketing that will completely transform your business. The seventh type is building a genuine relationship. This is the one that people either start too late or they never start and it doesn't do well. So you have to realize that, first of all, people are not idiots. Your customer, your clients, they're not idiots. Most of the time, at least you guarantee they're not idiots. And you want most to be happy. We talked about this when I was talking about the reciprocity principle for sales and marketing as one of the psychology hacks. But the idea is that your business should have things that it is doing absolutely for free without asking things in return. That act itself, interestingly, over time establishes you as authority and actually will get people to give you back by buying your products or at least referring it to friends and family who may need your products and services. So you know, what can you do? This goes back, you know, for example, let's say you, you write really long form blogs that are very useful, very long form type of videos that are very useful. You're giving away calculators, you're giving away cheat sheets, free assessments, and you're not asking for anything in return. Those do really well. Now, let's assume someone is a customer. The most important thing you want is for them to go and refer you to their family and friends and other people that they know about, or they go out of their way and write you a nice positive review. So when you have a customer, you should also have certain things you're giving them that was not part of their expected product or service that they did not expect it at all. For example, you could give, let's say a customer buys a sort of a service from you. And let's say this was somebody who was, who bought a mortgage from you. Let's say you're a mortgage broker and they bought a mortgage from you. You have done this, uh, your job, you've satisfied them. You give them a good rate. You've secured the amount of mortgage they wanted. But then a couple of weeks later, or after they buy immediately, you say, Hey, I also found these properties that work with your budget based on the conversation we had, I think you're going to absolutely love them. So you're going out of your way. This is something that you don't even tell them. And maybe you have a person in real estate who is working with you and you had them go through this person's profile and based on the conversation you had and their budget and the geographical location based on the conversation you had that you know about, you provide them, hey, here's some cool properties I found for you in case you're interested. I thought I'd share it with you. That was one example, for example. You have to figure out what makes sense for your business and try to incorporate a lot of these things. And it's it's counterintuitive because normally people want to just tighten their sales, their marketing, make the sale. And once they've made the sale, they want to just do the bare minimum of their service and then bounce nothing more. But that's not how you're going to have that positive impact you're going to have on a customer that's so moved and so happy that they're going to go out of their way to tell their family and friends. You can't just ask people, hey, can you please refer me to your family and friends? It doesn't work like that. It almost never works like that. You almost cannot even pay people to go tell their family and friends. 
Those type of referral programs are just dumb. They usually don't work. The best thing you could do is go above and beyond what you promised so that not only you satisfy them, you're, they're not extremely happy because you gave them something they didn't even pay for. So now the value that you've provided in their head seems a lot more than what they've paid. So that extra that you've given turns into reciprocity and they want to return that favor as soon as they can. And they're going to go and tell their family and friends, which is the most important thing you want. To wrap up, what are the seven psychology hacks that you have to use in your sales and marketing? There are deadlines, scarcity, reciprocity, completion bias, risk removal, social proof, and building a genuine relationship. If you enjoyed this, my name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at entrepreneurcorner.com. Go ahead and share this with a friend who may enjoy this as well. If you want to get more of these tips, uh, subscribe to whatever social media channel you're watching this so that you don't miss any of my future episodes. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.